wife battering is threatening to become an epidemic in the United States. According to recent studies, there are from 26 to 30 million abused wives in the country today. This is Janice Halston. She could be one of them. What do you think? Huh? Here, Chris, hold this for me. Donnie, you never said anything about buying I can get this thing it. for an absolute steal. Here, Chris, take this in the house for Dad, will you? Thank you, pal. Come on, take a look. Remember Claude? Yeah. The guy who runs a camera store? Yeah. Well, old Claude just has to come up with some fast cash. Huh? Look, Mom, here's a table that we can all sit around. And Daddy says we're going to go to Canada in this, right? Right. Well, still, it looks awfully expensive. Are you sure we can afford it? Afford it? Huh. Why don't you just leave that the old breadwinner here, huh? Right, Peggy? Yeah. Let's go. Oh, well, did something happen? Did that call your deal I'll tell you come later. Through? Come on, let's go for a test drive. You go, honey. I've come got on, the plants are just going to have to wait. Honey, put me down. Oh, no. Watch out. Be careful. Oh, oh, oh be careful. Don't drop her, Dad. Yeah. Say, Dad. Dad, hi, Dad. See where the kids have gone. Donnie, don't go. Why? Well, I want to talk to you about something. What? I still don't understand how. Honey, this camper is my department. If I say that I can handle it, I can handle it. We can save money by buying this. How? Well, I got a three week vacation coming up, right? We just pile the kids in the camper and take off. Look at all the money we'll save on motels and restaurants. Donnie, there's only one bed in there. Oh, no, no, no. No, the big one over the cab, that's for us. The kid's bed pulls down here out of the wall, right over the table. Oh, I didn't know that was there. There's plenty of room. Oh, honey, you think of everything. Um, you want to go inside and see if our bed is comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're crazy. It makes that kid. We're in a public place here. I mean, we could get arrested for... Reckless parking or something. We're consenting adults, aren't we? <sighs> oh, Donnie. What do I have to do? Get on some sort of waiting list? Hey, come on. That's kind of hitting below the belt, isn't it? <laughs> it's just that recently I've... I been... know. You've been under a lot of pressure. Janice. You know I love you. Hmm? Still? I always will. Uh, 
I didn't pull you away from TV, did I? Oh, I'm sorry. I just had to call you and tell you about, about the camper. I'm going to take it. Yeah, would you mind going over those figures for me just uh, one more time? Honey, is there a pencil there? Well, hold on a minute. Will you, Claude? A pencil, will you please, honey? Thank you. Okay, shoot. Right. Right. Well, I spoke to the bank this morning about the financing. There's no problem there. No. Thank you. Uh, you remember the client that I was telling you about, the one that I've been romancing for the past month? That's right, the doctor, Collier. Well, I think that he's going to spring loose for the entire package. <laughs> you sell that camper to anybody else, old buddy, and I'm going to break all 12 of your fingers. <laughs> right. Right. I'll talk to you. Hey, babe, why so glum? Didn't you hear? I can afford 10 campers if I want them. And a cliff to push them over when they get dirty. Donnie, huh? it would be nice if just once in a while you would tell me something first before you told all your friends. Oh, now what do you want to hear that for? That's man talk. Right? Besides, I got other plans for you. Oh, yeah? Like what? <clears throat> He sees more action than Starsky and Hunch put together. <laughs> Never mind the girls. Take a look at his desk. 25 years old, and it's as clean as a vice president's. How can you sell insurance when there's nothing on your desk? <laughs> hey, hey, look. <clears throat> Larry's telling him how you tied down the Collier deal. <laughs> now, let's see how much class he's got. Hey, five bucks says that he only used it to remind us of what a hot shot he is. You're wrong. I'll hold it. Hello, Mort. Don, how are things doing in the old folks section? Creaking along, Rusty, creaking along. Hey, I hear you landed a big one. Uh, half a mil? Oh, just a start. I should triple it by the end of the month. No kidding. Congratulations. Have I shown you guys my certificate? Hmm? Just had it framed. Third in national sales last month. Signed by... I know. Signed by chairman of the board in Philadelphia. Chairman of the board know, signed I... it. <laughs> uh, would you look at all the money? Guys, gals, it's coffee break time. Donald's buying. You just can't wait to start spending that commission. Hey, you don't want to mess up your desk with that, Rusty. Somebody might think you work here. Hello, doctor. Oh, really? You coming, Chad? Oh, I... Excuse me. No, I'm not coming. Just go on. No, I don't know how a man expects to sell insurance if he's not friendly. Look, Doctor, uh, if I could just go over those figures with you one more time, I'm certain that... Yes. Uh-huh. Doctor, uh, you have no idea how important this is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I understand that it's not you. Yes, sir. No. 
Donald? Huh? I know what's bothering you. Me? Hey. Dr. Collier called here this morning, just after you left. Well, that's fine. Well, would you like to talk about it? Janice, if you've got any sense, you'll leave me alone tonight. I know you lost the policy. You know, that's what's upsetting you. <laughs> well, you're wrong. What's upsetting me is that you've overdrawn the checking account again. I did? Unbelievable. This is the second time this month. I'm sorry, Donald. You're sorry? That's terrific. I'm the one that got the call from the vice president, and I'm the one that's going to have to go down there and straighten out this mess. Do you have any idea how embarrassing that is? Huh? There's not going to be any commission from the Collier sale, is there? That's right. There's no commission. Then are you going to call? Well, come on. Come on, say it. I mean, get it out. You'd really love that, wouldn't you? You'd love it if I had to call up Claude and cry to him now that I can't afford the camper. Well, then would you like to tell me just where that money's going to come from? I don't have to tell you a damn thing, nothing. Shh, the kids will wake up. They're going to hear you. I worked my whole lousy life. And finally, finally I get something for me. And the first thing that you want me to do is to give it back. It's not only the stupid camper, either. It's everything. You never miss an opportunity to mess up my life. Can't even balance out a checkbook. You can't even make out a, a, a grocery list. You can't even leave a pencil by a telephone. And I've asked you to do it. How many times have I said, just please, leave a pencil by the telephone? Well, maybe if I knew how much money we were going to have every week. What did you say? What? Janice? Janice! Janice, don't you walk away from me! Burn yourself, you want me! Hey, you, you don't think that... You don't believe that I did this on purpose, do you? Janice, I gave you my word that I, it wouldn't happen again. I, I haven't laid a hand on you in, in, in months, have I? Well, then it was just, it was just a crazy accident. You must have slipped on something here. Come on. Let me help you out, please. What are you thinking, hmm? I wish you wouldn't drive yourself so hard. Well, it's just that I don't want a lot for us. Is that wrong? Hmm? No. Time is going by so fast. There's plenty of time, Donnie. <laughs> How long am I supposed to wait to start enjoying life? Like my father, until it's too late? We've got the kids. We've got each other. That's all that's important, isn't it? We don't have to go into debt to be happy. Well, I just want my kids to have a... a childhood that they can feel good about. That's all. Because you didn't? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe. Donnie? Yeah? If you still think we could manage the camper. Well, of course we can. <laughs> that guy here counts not the only thing I've got going. Really? Ask Mark. Ask anybody. I've got more experience than anybody in the office. That's got to count for something. Then you do what you think is best, Donnie. <laughs> I know that I've been a little tough to live with lately. I know that. But it's... But I won't make things good for us. I know.
I looked in the rearview mirror. I was sure no one was behind me. Janice? Me, it's Car Karen Renshaw. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine running into you. I thought you were living in Florida. I was. I was living in Florida. What are we doing back here? Listen, let's let's get our tin out of the road, huh? Oh, well. oh, wow. Am I in trouble? Oh, listen, we ran into each other. What do you got insurance for? Right. If I got insurance, Donald is in the insurance business. Oh, Donald. The centerfold from Seventeen Magazine. How is Donald? He's fine. We're very happy. Really, we are. Did I say you weren't happy? Just Donald's not going to be very happy about the car. Listen, don't worry about it. I was dating a guy a while back. He runs a garage. Dating? Divorced person. Oh, I hadn't heard. Yeah. Listen, uh, my office is three blocks away from here. Follow me over there. We'll call him, okay? Okay. So the kids spend the school term with Jerry, and then um, they're here with me for the summer. Well, hey, they're still my kids. Jerry loves them just as much as I do. Anyway, I've got a right to put my life together. Thank you. Here we be. Give me one minute, and I'll get this guy on the phone. So what is it that you do? You're Karen, are you secretary, or what? I'm a draftswoman. Jan, they don't actually require that I smoke cigars and wear boxer shorts. <laughs> uh, Jimmy? Hi, Karen. Listen, I just bumped into an old friend. Yeah. No, no, she didn't think it was funny either. Can you see her for me? Oh, you're terrific. Terrific, okay. I never thought either one of us would end up doing anything like this. Listen, this is just the beginning for me. After I put in six years here and a couple night courses, I get my degree as an architect. Hey, you know what? I'm really impressed. Ah, well, I got tired of working in kitchens designed by men who don't know breadboards from ironing boards. Uh, look, love, I've got a meeting to go into. Uh, but I'm going to have a bunch of people up to the house in a few weeks, and I'll give you and Donald a call. I'd love to, but Donald doesn't seem to care much for parties these days. Well, wait a minute. You sure we're talking about the same Donald Halston? I'm sure. You tell Donald Halston. I don't care if he is bald and old and fat. <laughs> I want to see him. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm calling you. All right. Thank you. Hey, what's with uh, young Fenton there? Did you get another certificate from the president? Oh, I hate to be the one to tell you this, Donald, but that little punk has been chosen training supervisor. You're kidding. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. You all right? Yeah, sure. Okay, here he comes. I'll tell you what, you trip him and I'll drop him lightly on his ear. Hey, nice going there, old buddy. I'd like to congratulate you on your new position. Well, thank you very much. Listen, somebody said that you had your eye on that job. Is that so? <laughs> Are you serious? Spend my time teaching kids to sell insurance? I think I'd rather run a nursery school. Well, for 5% override on what they sell, I think I can afford to wipe a few noses. All right. Who do you have to poison to get out of this business, huh? <laughs> we can always start with ourselves. Uh, Think it's too early to start drinking to Fearless Fenton's bad health? Well, maybe another time. All right, come on. You don't want to take this home with you. We'll go out and have some laughs. Let's go. Hey, come on. Come on! You know what we ought to do, you and me? We ought to start our own insurance company. I think I'd rather start a hog farm. <laughs> no, really, seriously. Oh, and to keep the aggravation to a minimum, we have a big sign that says Halston and Burns Limited, and underneath it says no customers want it. <laughs> That's the kind of sales campaign I can really get behind. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll sit in these big leather chairs behind this huge mahogany desk, and we'll eat pizza and drink beer all day. Hmm? Mm. What's the matter? You know, you get to a certain age, you just, you gotta start taking care of the old body. You gotta start laying off all that junk food. <laughs> no, you can. That's the only thing Marilyn can cook. I bet if I eat a carrot, my body would go into instant vitamin shock. And the booze. You ought to swear off of this stuff. I don't think that. No, I mean it, really. You know, I've been planning on starting to work out again. 
You want to go with me over the park? Huh? We jog around the track a little and shoot a few baskets. Make you feel good. What do you say? I say we ought to have another painkiller and discuss it rationally. Not a bad idea. Okay. What? Well, hey. wait a minute. It's getting late. Maybe we ought to go home. Okay, we'll put it in the hand of the gods. Uh, as we go home, tails, we order up another round. Heads. Want to make it two out of three? Come on, what do you say? One for the road. I'll call Janice and tell her I'll be a little late. Oh, you dime. Make it a nickel. Tell yours to call mine. I got a couple of friends who want to meet you. Uh, I just uh, thought I'd like you to introduce you. You're a very good friend of mine. Um, miss, miss, uh, we have a couple of drinks at the bar, and what, what, what were you on? Uh, vodka on the rocks. Two vodka on the, yeah. two vodka on the rocks, and just bring them over. Thanks, thanks. Uh, this is uh, Sandy, and this is Myrna, and this is my best friend, uh, Rusty Fenton. He's a manure salesman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. I was third in national sales last month. 27 boxcars full. Uh -oh. That's a lot of bull. Hmm? <laughs> Did I tell you? Huh? Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding about what he sells. No, no, no. Listen, I've got a gold shovel to prove it. Signed by chairman of the board. You want to see it? Well, I do, because I do not believe that you have any such gold shovel. Oh, no, no, no. He's not kidding, really. But the only trouble is it's in his room over at the Mayflower Motel. Well, then, let's go. I want to powder my nose first, okay? Okay. I'll go uh, with you. We'll be waiting. We'll be back. <laughs> uh, hold a drink. Huh? Oh, hold a drink. Thanks. See the way that little brunette's looking at you, huh? <laughs> you're a piece of chocolate cake. You'd be all over her face by now. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem? Hey, you know, Mart, all the time I've been married, I got to tell you that uh, I've just never, you know, I believe you. Shows? Yeah, it shows. Well, it may seem a little bit square, but it's not that I haven't thought about it from time to time, you know. It's just that, uh, for me, it, it didn't seem the way to... <laughs> Look, Donald, where has that attitude ever gotten you? Huh? I mean, are you richer, are you smarter, better looking? What are you doing? He's going to wait around until all your vital juices dry up forever? <clears throat> hey, come on. Here they come. Let's go. <laughs> He's quite a kidder. My friend Mort, huh? Yes, he is. Actually, I'm in insurance. Oh, it sounds like very interesting work. Well, it has its compensation. There's a little joke there, insurance compensation. I guess we can leave that alone. <laughs> well. So what do you do? You, you work or, um, you know, you... Stewardess or nurse or? Do you really need to know? All right. I just. <laughs> Can you just ease up? I'm not going to bite you. I've. Uh, I've got to tell you the truth. I. My name is not Rusty Fenton. I never thought that it was. You didn't? How come? Because you don't look rusty to me. Listen, I'm married. I got two kids. I got a house with a mortgage that won't be paid off till March the 1st in the year 2005. Well, I guess that I can live with that. If you really want to know the truth, I've just had a rotten day. You think you're getting someplace in this life, you know what I mean? And you're very careful to play everything with the rules. And then you stop just for a moment to catch your breath. And then some 25-year-old whiz kid, he <sighs> runs you off the road. Now listen to me, love. 
If I wanted to hear what a tough day somebody had, I would have gone home. What the hell happened to the car out there? Don't give me your silent treatment. I ask you a question, lady. I made dinner. It's still on the warmer. Have any idea how much that's going to cost? And don't talk to me about insurance. We've got a hundred dollar deductible. You come waltzing in here after two o'clock in the morning, smelling like a bar rag, and you try to turn it back on me. Where were you? With Mort? I really don't think you want to know where I was. You could have at least phoned me. You could have done that. Or maybe you were busy with Dr. Collier writing up another half million dollar policy. All right. All right, you want to know where I was? I'll tell you where I was. I picked up a woman in a bar and I took her to a motel. That's where I was. I don't believe you. Well, you damn well better believe me. And you better know why, because you drove me to it with your nagging and your complaining. You're giving me no support. Well, then. Well, then what? Get it out! Well, out. well then, you just go back to that motel and spend the whole night with her. Because you sure haven't been winning any prizes in bed around here. Why, you Disturbance here. 
Anything wrong? Well, we <laughs> had a little family argument, raised our voices maybe a little bit. It's, uh, it's all settled now. Okay, sorry to have bothered. Uh, may we talk to your wife, Mr. Halston? Donald Halston. I, uh, I'm afraid she's already gone to bed. Well, we'd like to have a look at her, if you don't mind, sir, for our report. Come in. Janice! Janice! Tell us what happened, man. Come and sit down. Now, would you tell us exactly what happened, please? I tripped on the stair and hit my head on... Are you sure about that, ma'am? Because if anybody put a hand on you, we can take them downtown. Lady, that's our job. You don't have to be afraid. Just say that you're willing to swear out a warrant, and we'll take it from there. Tripped. That's all that happened. All right, good. Let's go. I mean, I think I could have talked her into filing a complaint. Now, look, I've had two partners of mine cut up already in these family things. I know, I know. All right, all right. You want to go back in there, you go ahead. But the only one that's going to get hurt is you, old buddy. Besides, a good punching around is what some of these women need to turn them on. Now, you take those two in there. They're most likely kissing and making up right this minute. Let's go. Just, uh, this time you just made me so mad I didn't know what I was doing. Honey, what are you doing home from school? I didn't feel good. I threw up. Oh, well, did you go see the nurse? Why didn't the office call me? I don't know. I guess I forgot. Peggy. Honey, why are you lying to me? Peggy. You lied to me. You said you fell down and that's how you hurt your face. Why does Daddy hit you? Did you do something bad? Is that why he hurt you? Well, yes, 
Honey, in a way, I did overdraw the checking account and I banged up the car. But that doesn't mean... Are you and Daddy going to get a divorce? Oh, honey, don't you worry about that. Of course, your daddy and I are going to stay together. It's just that sometimes he loses his temper, but he's always sorry afterward. Do you still love him? He was the first man I ever loved, and the only one. Oh, baby. You only could have known your daddy when I first met him. He was so sweet, and he was so strong, and his head was full of the most wonderful dreams. And he could have had any girl he wanted, but he picked me. You know, he said that if I'd marry him, that he'd buy me a castle, and that we would live on strawberry milkshakes, <laughs> and that he'd always take care of me. But now he hits you. Well, honey, right now your daddy's going through a hard time. But things are going to be good again soon. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, she goes on like that, see, for, what, half an hour or more? Like, a, where were you until 2 o'clock in the morning? Why didn't you call? How would I like it if she went mm -hmm. catting around the town all the time like I did? So you know what I finally told her? I said, Marilyn, believe me, if you keep this up, believe me, one of these days is going to be pow, right in the old kisser. <laughs> I know, I told her that. Right, oh, absolutely. Oh, God, you guys are really disgusting. Oh, come on. Listen, I got to get to work, you guys. Come on, we're going to get in trouble, huh? Gee. Oh. Uh, what do you got? Uh, oh, wait, don't tell me, don't tell me. It's, uh, it's a present for Janice to ease the old guilty conscience, right? No, no, this is the day I go out to see my father. Hey, while you're out there, why don't you sell him some insurance? We can use the business. <laughs> Donald, could I speak to you for a minute? Yeah, sure, Bob. Are you off to see a client, are you? Sort of. Ah, good, good, that's good. Listen, I have a few leads here that look promising. I thought you might like to follow them up. <laughs> you know, Bob, you don't have to keep propping me up. If I'm not doing a job, why don't you just say so? Hey, what are you getting so touchy about? Everybody has a bad month. Or two? Or three? It happens. My commission is not going to equal my advance again this month, right? You've been with the company a long time, Donald. You've got credit here. Uh, we know you put a lot of work in on the Collier thing. Obviously not enough. Collier thought about what he was getting into, and he panicked. He uh, had an attack of buyer's remorse, and he backed out of it. You know, that's the way it goes sometimes. You know that. But he's not supposed to panic. He's not supposed to know what he wants or what he doesn't want. He's supposed to have some confidence in the man that he's working with. Why are you so tough on yourself? Would you have let this one get away? Would Fenton? He's got the killer instinct, Donald. Uh, not too many of us are blessed with it. Look, I happen to know that you worked past 10 o'clock three nights last week. When's the last time you put your kids to bed, hmm? I want to tell you something, Bob. I work for you, but that doesn't give you the right to do a time and motion study on my family life. Sorry, I didn't do mean Do me it. a favor, will you? Just give this to one of the new guys. I've always been able to do just fine on my own. Dad! I gotta go. My son's here. Ben, take my place, will you? Well, Donald, one of these days you're gonna be on time and I can throw away my watch. Sorry, Dad. Had to stop by and see a couple of clients. Just proves my point, don't it? What point? I've been telling you for years. You gotta go into business for yourself. Otherwise, you're nothing. Just a wage slave. Yeah. I got a little something for you. When are you going to stop spending your life making other people rich? Well, I think maybe I already have. What's that supposed to be? Oh, nothing. nothing. Yeah. Want to open it? See what's in the box? I saw this in Seattle the last time that I was up there. It reminded me of the one you lost. Summer we went to Yellowstone, remember? Too big. 
No, no, here, here, try it on. No, I was, I was very careful to make sure that I got the right size. It'll fit. There. How's that? Huh? That's perfect. Too big. Well, take it off. I'll, I'll send it back. Oh, never mind. I'll keep it. A place like this doesn't make any difference anyway. <laughs> Nobody here I need to impress. I thought you said you liked it here. The food was good, that you'd met some new friends. Well, we all make mistakes. Even you and God? Is that supposed to be some kind of joke, young man? No, no, Dad, I'm sorry. It's just that I hope that you're not thinking about moving again. Well, why don't you just leave that to me? If I need your advice, I'll ask for it. Huh? Yes, sir. Now then, you tell me. What's bothering you? Nothing. You've been dragging your face on the ground ever since you got here. What is it? Don't you think that's a little bit of an over-exaggeration? I just got here. I don't argue with me. I could tell. What is it, Janice? You Jan and Janice fighting? No, Janice and I are getting along just fine. Money, then? You need a few dollars? Look, Dad, I, I really appreciate the offer, but believe me, I'm, I'm in great shape, really. Well, you keep it in mind, you hear? I don't want anybody to think a son of mine has to go around begging. Yeah. Mr. Holston. Yeah, what do you want? Not you, sir, your son. Excuse me. Hey, Mr. Simpson. I don't like to have to remind people of this sort of thing, but this is the second month we haven't had a payment from you. Well, I'm sure I put a check in the mail to you. You didn't get it? Your father seems to be getting along quite well here. But we do have a rather long waiting list. It would be a shame to have to ask you to move it out. Well, I'll take care of it right away. Two days at the most. Donald, did you come to see him or me? <laughs> what are you talking to that idiot about? He's a pain in the neck. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and rest. All right, thank you for coming, ladies. See you next time. <laughs> Your membership ran out. I'm Mort renewed it. My birthday present. And next week? Yeah. Said that if I lose a pound a week for the next three years, he's gonna buy me a facelift and a Paris divorce. <laughs> uh, say, what time did Donald finally get home last Thursday night? Oh, not late. Just a few minutes after your call. And yeah, more too. Thank you, Bridget. Thanks. Excuse me, Mrs. Burns. I know it's not my place to ask, but is Mrs. Holston feeling all right? Sure, I suppose so. Uh, my guess is that, uh, she's suffering from a slight case of late-night husband. First time is always the toughest. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. She'll get over it. You know, I was saying to Mort, how come we all don't get together? How come we don't see more of you and Donald? Uh, we'll do it soon. Mm -hmm. How come you're so modest all of a sudden? We're all girls. No reason. You gonna take some steam? Mm, just grab a shower. I'll meet you back here. Oh, my God. What's all that? It's from the car accident the other day. Remember I told you? Yeah. You said you just banged the fender and hit your head. Well, I got tossed around a lot, and I bruise easy. I'll say. Well, what else would you think it was? Put you back here, baby. Mrs. Halston, forgive me for saying so, but I don't believe you got those bruises from a car accident. And I didn't hear anybody ask you what you thought. May I have that, please? Look, I know how you feel. Like, like this is, this is something that's only happening to you. And if you told anyone about it, they'd, they'd think you were some kind of a freak. I don't want to talk about it. Please. 
Whoever it is that's doing this to you, your husband, your boyfriend, whoever it is, he isn't going to stop. You can kid yourself. You can tell yourself he will stop, but he won't. Not before he really hurts you. Not even then. That's because the salad wasn't on the table when he thought it ought to be. Look, I've written down this number for you. These people know how to help. Call them, please. I did. They showed me how to save my life. Lifeline, this is Barbara. How can we help? I, I don't want to give my name. Well, that's perfectly all right. Just be easy. How can we help? Um, I have this friend. Well, her husband took a swing at her. I, I'm not sure if it will happen again, but if it does... Will you tell her to come and talk to us here at the Y? We're at 840 South Apple Street. Or at least to call. We have counselors available any time of the day or night. We have group sessions for why. I'm sorry. I have to go now. Hi. Well, how'd your day go? Oh, come on, Janice. It's been three days. How long are you going to keep this vow of silence? That was the worst time, Donnie. That was the worst you ever hurt me. I know, and I, I said that I was sorry. It's just that... Sometimes I guess I just don't know my own strength. Janice, I'll do anything that you want, anything. I'll even go to, to Karen Renshaw's party. Go on, call her up. Tell her that, that I've changed my mind, that, that we'll be there. And here, here, I want you to buy yourself something really nice to wear. Now, oh, come on, take it. You haven't bought a pretty dress in... The other night, that, that woman, she just, she just meant nothing to me, nothing. I told you, nothing. It's just that uh, I had a couple of drinks too many and it just, it just happened, that's all. But I swear to you, if, if she walked through the room right now, I wouldn't even recognize her. This you got to believe, if you believe nothing else, because it's the truth. I need you. And... and I... I love you. And I... just... no other woman that I ever cared about. Honey, I believe you.
caught you. I caught you. I caught you. <laughs> hey, does anybody want to know what's in my pocket? Get out of here! Oh, Kathy! I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't enjoy being hit. I am not some kind of masochist. Then why do you stay with us? I don't know. Irene, would you like to know why I stayed and took it all those years? Because I was scared. I was more frightened of being on my own than of being hit. I mean, what was I trained for? Having children and making avocado dip? Dolores? Did you ever speak to him about that? We could never really talk to each other. We didn't know how to show affection or whatever feelings we had. No, oh, fighting and hitting was our way of communicating. When he hit me, at least I knew I was alive, I existed, and bad as that was, it was better than being ignored. I'd rather be ignored. But afterwards was nice. After he hit me, because he was gentle and he was sorry. You know why? Because he was scared. He didn't want your friends to find out. Well, who has friends? They don't let you have any friends. They cut you off from everybody. It's always easier to blame the man, isn't it? Well, I didn't ask to be hit. Didn't you? No. Yeah. Dr. Morgan, I don't understand what she's talking about. I mean, I never did anything... Anything to provoke him, even though you knew he was out of control. Never said the wrong word at just the wrong moment. Why would I do that? If I allow him to beat me, then I don't have to accomplish anything to be a whole person. How can I be expected to be a whole human being? How can I be expected to know anything about money? To buy furniture, even to clean my house, when I live with a man who hits me. He's right. I guess somehow deep down inside, I felt I deserved to be hit. You know what I mean? No. Well, I'm not looking to take more than my own share of the blame. If anything went wrong, it was my fault. If the sun didn't shine in the morning, he pushed me down the stairs. Margot, did you ever try to find out why? No, I didn't. Try. My husband saw his father beat his mother once, twice a month, just to let her know who was boss. He just figured that was the way it's supposed to be. You know, the last time my terror started beating on me, I was seven months pregnant. I almost lost a child. Your old man ever smack you when you were pregnant? <laughs> you don't understand. Donald isn't like that. Well, it's true that he did shove me. Sort of, but he'd had too much to drink. He didn't know what he was doing. Uh-uh. Drunk don't count. That's just an excuse for a guy to do what he wants to do anyway. Because he beat his children? Absolutely not. You do. Sooner or later, most of them do. Well, you're wrong. You don't know Donald. You don't know anything about him. He works hard. He's a good husband, and he's good to the kids. When my father was dying, he stayed up all night with me, every night for two weeks. It, 
As far as what happened, he promised me it'll never happen again. I wouldn't count on it. You hang in there, Janice. Just as long as you can, you give it every chance to work. How can you say that? You've been there. You know what she's going through. Yes, I've been there. And I'm going back. To your old man? Why in the world? Because I can't make it out there anymore. Because I've got three kids and I can't feed them on a welfare check. And nobody will rent us an apartment if it's got carpets in the floors or glass in the window. You've given us a lot. And I appreciate the support, but... Uh, I can't hold it together anymore, Dr. Morgan. And it's getting punched once or twice a month. I'm surprised I get to feed, to feed my kids and... Uh, to be quite a jock. Oh, I got kind of a late start. Played a little college basketball after I got out of the service. What do you have? Vodka on the rocks will be fine. Ran a little track. Why be so modest? Karen says you almost turned professional. <laughs> well, thought about it, but it didn't quite work out. And now you're what, a uh, stockbroker? No, no, I sell insurance. Oh, say, wait a minute, will you? Uh, Wes? Uh, rushed into the bar, he said, give me a shot of big rape. <laughs> steal her away. On the other hand, I don't suppose you'd have any trouble at all finding a replacement. <laughs> nice of you to say so. Wasn't a casual observation, love. It was an invitation. Yeah, well, I think that I'll just um, take the compliment and pass on the offer. Whatever's easy. She designed an extra bedroom for her houseboy? Ben is not her houseboy. He lives in a house, doesn't he? He's obviously only a boy. He's a graduate architect. He's already won prizes. Oh, is Karen supposed to be one of them? <laughs> what law says a woman can't be interested in a man that's younger than she is? Well, I think it's the same law that says a woman should be home taking care of her own kids instead of going to bed with somebody else's. Why are you so down on Karen? She likes you. I'm not down on it. I just don't want you to end up like her, that's all. Well, if you mean making something of myself, maybe getting a job or starting a little business, I gotta tell you, Donnie, I wouldn't mind. You see what I mean? I could be of some help to you if you'd let me. I know I could. Maybe we could sell the house, get out from under some of those payments. We could live a simpler life, like when we first got married. That was the happiest time for us. Janice, I gotta tell you that I've, I've lost my taste for honest property. I've worked hard for what I've got, and I'm not gonna give it all up just to be some scruffy hippie living in a, in a three-room apartment. I didn't say that. And I'm not gonna end up like my father, either. Mean old buzzard that still thinks he's got a, a pot to spit in? He's a very sad old man. Oh. Yeah. You should have had him for a father. Donald, can I ask you a question? Of course. 
course. I know your father whipped you a lot when you were growing up. That's right. And I'm better for it. Did he ever hit your mother? He did, didn't he? Okay, I'm sorry I brought it so up. Am I. Well, come on, let's go back to party then. Dennis, why don't we just go on home? I thought that's why we farmed the kids out for the weekend, so we could relax for a change. Honey, the place is crawling with weirdos. They all look like they just flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> They're probably saying the same thing about us. Come on, honey. Let's forget about Rusty Fenton and endowment. <laughs> Coming on with that guy? Coming on. You spent the whole afternoon hanging all over him. Donald, we were just talking. About what? About business. I told him I would like to open a little business. Huh. Why didn't you just tell him you'd like to do open heart surgery while you were at it? Why do you have to spend so much of your time trying to prove that I'm stupid? I suppose you're going to tell me that's the first time you ever met the guy. I've been wondering what you've been doing with your afternoons. Looking at you, it's obvious that you haven't been at the gym. I think you actually expect me to stand here and defend myself. I'm not stupid. I know you've been spending time with him. And if we were, it's all right for you to mess around. Is that it? But it's not all right for me. You're admitting it? Is that what you're doing? I'm admitting, admitting that you have a diseased mind. Well, why don't you just speak a little louder? Maybe the whole neighborhood would like I to... don't care who hears. I Shut think up! I... Ah! 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 Police officers, open up in there. Kick it in. I'll go around back. I, I, I live here. Don't, don't, don't shoot. Okay. All right. All right. This is my house. I live here. Yeah, we'll talk about it. He's her husband. Yeah, he is. You're getting to be a regular customer, aren't you? All right, turn him loose. Maybe if you would have let me take the extra five minutes the other night, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe. from you. 
What the hell do you think you're doing? She's going to need some clothes when she comes out of the hospital that aren't covered with blood. I'll get her what she needs. I think that uh, you are probably the last person she wants to see right now. Besides, she already has a visitor. Who? An assistant district attorney. And if Jen doesn't get you put away for six or eight months, then she's dumber than you've made her think she is. Oh, by the way, it uh, might interest you to know that my friend Jeffrey, the landscape artist, has been working for the last half year in Boston, and he just made it in yesterday for my party. So you see, you fractured three of your wife's ribs for nothing, Hotcha. You got what you need. You want to get out of here? She needs a toothbrush. Now take this stuff and please get out of here. That's it, isn't it, Don? That's the way you make your muscles ripple. By shoving around women half your size. I am not Janice. And you better keep that in mind, tough man. You want to put your hand on me again? I'll not only call the cops. I'll call the whole damn Marine Corps. You know, it's, it's hard for me to believe that you really did that to her. You know, Donnie, I could name you a dozen girls who would happily have pushed Jan in front of a truck for a chance to get next to you. And this may come as a surprise. I was one of them. Poor little Jan. She got lucky. If you'd been beaten in the street by a mugger, you'd be down to the DA's office in a flash to file a complaint. Tell me why this is any different. Because he's your husband, right? Because if you lock him up, who's going to pay the bills and who's going to support your kids? Yes, that's part of it. Okay. Can we talk about your kids? You're not the only victim in this crime. Every time it happens, it puts a scar on them. An emotional scar. Five years ago, there were no decent rape laws in this state. And things didn't change until women were willing to testify. Now, how are we going to move those people in the state legislature if we can't even get the women who are beaten to stand up and say, I'm not somebody's property. I have a God-given right not to be hit. I... I just don't know if I can do that to him. If you stay, and you give him a chance to put you in a coma for six months, or worse, would that be helping him? Here's my number at the DA's office. Don't ask for anyone else but me. Keep on ducking, sugar. I'm Dr. Morgan. Figure. If you have any questions or you'd like to speak to me, please feel free to call. Sure.
kids are fine. They're, uh, they're anxious for you to come home. I know. I spoke with them on the phone. I swear to you that if I ever hurt you again, I'll... Johnny, don't. I'll pack up. I'll leave the country. Please, don't go on making promises you can't possibly keep. There is a chance that you could change. But only if you really want to. And only if you have help. Is that what... what he told you, your Dr. Morgan there? Telling you that it's all my fault, is that it? What he said was, if I let you hit me, then it's my fault too. It's a two-sided game. We had a little argument, it got out of hand. We don't have arguments, Donald. Not like normal people, anyway. We don't know how to fight. There's no middle ground for us. I either walk around in a trance because I'm so terrified of you, or if I open up my mouth, which I admit I do, then I run the risk that you'll kill me. Oh, come on, Janice. Aren't you overstating the case just a bit? No, I don't think so. There's this rage inside of you that you can't control. I don't know where it comes from father or where, but you've got to find out. Maybe it's me. Do you want to kill me, Tommy? What is it you want me to do? I want you to see Dr. Morgan. Okay. Okay, I'll go. You sure you don't want to come spend a couple days with me? No, thanks. I've got some things to do. I have to meet Donald in town this afternoon. Janice. Don't say it, Karen. I've had about all the good advice I can handle for one week. We're different, Karen, you and I. Let's just leave it at that, okay? You've changed so much. People change in 12 years. That's natural. You were so bright. And you were a smart aleck. The whole world was in front of you. And you didn't have bruises all over your face. No. Just a mild case of acne. We were going to climb Mount Everest, do you remember that? And learn how to fly airplanes and be Brenda Starr, the two of us. That's comic book stuff. The real world isn't like that. Yeah, maybe. So what's real, going back in there to get smashed around again? It's not going to happen this time. Donald has made me certain promises. <sighs> You're incredible. The man is an animal. Don't you understand that? And you believe him and you trust him. How can you trust him? Because, in spite of everything, I love him. But I guess you wouldn't understand that. No, you're right. I don't understand that. I don't understand staying with a guy who beats on you. I never heard anything about Jerry hitting you, so why didn't you stay and work it out with him? Oh, come on, Janice. This is not the 16th century, you know? Divorce is not a dirty word. And marriage isn't some high school home ec course, either. Or you take your F and sign up for something else. You failed marriage, Karen. I don't intend to. Not if I can help it. Donald and those kids, they're my life. And if I can't work it out with them, I mean, if I had to live the way you do, well, some guy you know is going to leave you the minute he spots something younger and prettier. And pretending you don't miss your children so bad, sometimes you want to die. I'm sorry. I guess I said too much. Yeah. But nothing I haven't said to myself from time to time. 
I might not have all the answers, Karen. But neither do you. So I guess I'm just going to work it out my own way. I hope you do, Jan. Dr. Morgan's office this afternoon. Oh, yeah. I got tied up with a new client. Honey, I think things are going to turn around for me again. Donald, you gave me your word. I know, I know, but it's... I just can't help it. I don't believe in shrinks. <laughs> Honey, you know I've been thinking about us. You know what the problem is? You know what has caused all of this? We were doing just fine until your friend Karen showed up. And she's really convinced you that you're unhappy. She really messed up your head. It's got nothing to do with Karen. Oh, come on, honey. You've never had these notions before about working, going to freaky parties, afternoon gripe sessions with women that don't even shave under their arms. Think about it. You've never cared about any of those things until Karen came along. Janice, honey, I want you to promise me for both of us that you won't see her again. Karen and I may not agree on everything, but she is my friend. I can't promise you anything of the kind. Please, Janice, please. I'm sorry, Donna. <gasps> well, you... You just leave me no choice, no choice. I am forbidding you to see that troublemaking, loudmouth broad again. Is that clear? Do I make myself understand? I want to be a good wife to you. That's why I came home. But you've got to let me be a person, too. Well, be a person. Nobody is stopping you. You have to have her to be a person. Don! Chris! Don, no, I'm not hurting you. No, no, Chris, I am no, not hurting you. Go back to bed. I, I, I am not hurting you.
just spoken to Dr. Morgan. He's on his way. They're setting up some cots in the recreation room for tonight. We don't even have any clothes. I feel I don't have five dollars in my purse. Well, we'll send somebody for your clothes in the morning, and we'll lend you what you need until you can get straightened out. I'll have to get a job. Well, do you know anybody who might want to hire you? I don't know. Maybe. Well, don't think about that now. Um, tomorrow we'll drop the kids off for school, and then if you feel up to it, you and I can go out looking for an apartment. Peggy, don't! No. Let her get it out. I painted Peggy's room bright yellow. I think she'll like it. Remember the garbage disposal that was so touchy that it got indigestion when you put eggshells in it? Well, I got a new one. So everything's ready for you to come back home. But I'm not ready. Janice, it's been two months. I want you back. We belong with each other. That's the way it is with us. Don't make me come begging. Do we discuss this some other time? I really don't want to lose this job. Well, I don't know why. You couldn't be earning enough here to feed a family of mice. Still don't understand, do you? Donald, I'll never be hit again. If I have to sleep in alleys and eat out of garbage cans, no one will ever hit me again. Janice, what do I have to do to get you back? Excuse me. Well, I sent her home. They're my kids, too, aren't they? Oh. Champagne and everything. Had a wonderful evening planned for us, Janice. You'll forgive me, I had to start without you. I would like you to leave, Donald. Now. That was him, wasn't it? That you were out with? That kid, Jeffrey? We were not out. We had a late shipment of azaleas that we had to get ready for morning, and he just dropped me off. You don't have a car? The car is in the shop. I finally put together enough money to get that fender fixed. So you need me. I'm not going to crawl off and die while you go hopping around town with four young friends. No! Are you drunk or crazy? The children are asleep in there. Well, we won't wait. We never did before. This is my place. I want you to leave. And I want you. <laughs> my life and you belong to me. No! And I want you right now. No, 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 please. No, please. I can't I want you. Don't go. I love you. You want me just as much as I want you. Separated or living apart. As long as you're married, the law, in its wisdom, guarantees every man his connubial rights. This is my body. It doesn't belong to him. 
Under the law, a husband cannot rape his wife. I want him in jail. Did he hit you? Not this time. Did he choke me? Look. Now we're getting close. How hard? I almost passed out. See, it's a first offense we'll ask for misdemeanor battery. That's six months in the county jail. Are you willing to go all the way with that? John, this is Charlotte Ames. I would like for you to draw up a complaint against a Mr. Donald Halston for violation of Penal Code 242. Which of you is Halston? Okay, Halston, come along with me. You've been bailed out. Where is he? Cross street in the bar. Says you'll wait till you're processed out. Hey, I know there's a lot of trouble for you to come down this way tonight and bail me out. I want to thank you. John Dillinger, I got 315 bucks invested in you. And uh, you want to drink? Vodka on the rocks. Vodka on the rocks, huh? 315 bucks. And I don't know what a 242 is. I'll get the money to you in a don't couple of days. I'm not in any rush. Well, what's a 242? Misdemeanor battery. Battery? Does that mean you actually hit her? Hmm, sort of. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she put you in jail for a sort of, huh? <laughs> well, you know how they are. She wanted to get even with me. And that... the time a while back when she was in the hospital with the broken ribs? Did you do that? <sighs> well, we had a little family argument, yeah. a little shoving, you know how they are. No, no, I don't. I don't know how to. Donald, I thought I knew you. I don't know. You don't oh, know. come on, Mark. Pow, right in the kisser. <laughs> Hit him once a week whether they needed or not, remember? <laughs> oh, my God, Donald. I mean, maybe I joke about that. Maybe I think about it once in a while, but... Is that a woman? The guy just doesn't do that. Not if he has any self-respect at all. Who asked you for your opinion anyway? Nobody. Wait, more. wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, it's like, like everything I've ever worked for is, is slipping away from me. My job, my wife, everything. All I wanted was to try and, and, and get her back, that's all. That's all. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're all right, Janice and Mort. <laughs> Maybe I belong in jail. I'm beginning to think so. Now, how am I supposed to defend a client with an attitude like that, huh? Well, why don't you just not try so hard? Do us all a favor, right? I know Charlotte Ames. She's tough. And she's fair. I think we can get her to go along with straight probation. But we'll have to give her something. Have to give her what? Trust me. Hello, sir. Plead guilty, six months probation. 
No jail. $500 fine. And uh, one condition. Well, what's the condition? You stay away from your wife. Now, you can't see her, and you can't try to talk to her. Mess up now, you bought yourself six hours in the camp. Wait a minute, please. Janice. You've got nothing to say to me, Donald. Well, you're right. There's, there's nothing that I can say to you to make up for what I've done to you. Well, then, as long as we agree on that, I think we should leave the rest for our attorneys to settle up. You said there was a, a chance that I could change. I thought so. I don't think so anymore. Please, uh, give me that chance. You're a human bomb, Donald. You're a threat to anyone who tries to get close to you. You're a threat to me, a threat to your kids. Well, I, I really think that I can deal with that now. I'm going to see Dr. Morgan. I really am. I, I think that it's important. That's a beginning. But it's only a beginning. I don't want to live with rage anymore. I don't want to live with fear. I don't want to live with pain. I might have needed that once. I don't anymore. Janice, you see, I've, I've got to know that, of course, when it's, when Dr. Morgan says that it's okay, I've just got to know that you're, you're going to be around. <laughs> I, I really am frightened. I never heard you say that before. Oh, I've always, always been afraid that somehow I wouldn't measure up. Always afraid that I wouldn't live up to, to what my father expected of me or what I expected of myself. I, I was always afraid that I'd lose you, always. When I first met you, Donnie, I was 17 years old. My heart stopped. I couldn't breathe for three days. Do you think I cared if you ever became a millionaire or had vice president after your name? Janice, you know, what I've got to do, <laughs> it's going to take a little time. I know. Judge is waiting for us. There are from 26 to 30 million abused wives in the country today. Four to five million of them are badly battered. In all the 50 states, there are presently only 30 active shelters for beaten women. 